Welcome to this next video in the playlist on field theory. In this video, what we're going to talk about is separable polynomials over a finite field of characteristic equal to a prime. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing that we did in the video on separable polynomials over a field of characteristic zero. We're going to characterize which polynomials in the ring of polynomials over a finite field of characteristic P are going to be separable and which are not. Okay, so firstly then the setup. So we're going to have some finite field uh, capital F here and of course the characteristic of this finite field is going to have to be equal to a prime. Now remember any finite field it cannot be characteristic zero because remember in a characteristic zero field you take the multiplicative identity and add it to itself however many times and you always get new answers. It never loops back around on itself. Okay so you have to have an infinite number of elements in a field of characteristic equal to zero. So we know instantly that if we're working with some finite field, that implies that the characteristic, of course, is equal to a prime. So we're going to study then uh, which polynomials are going to be separable in the ring of polynomials over a finite field of characteristic equal to a prime. Now let me just remind you what it means to have characteristic equal to a prime, okay, which is P here. So that means that the smallest number of times that you can add 1 to itself and get 0 as the answer is going to equal this prime P. Okay, and remember these fields of characteristic equal to P, they behave very differently to the fields of characteristic 0, in particular with regards to how derivatives um, behave. Okay, and that's one of the key reasons why in the video on uh, separable polynomials over a field of characteristic zero, the argument we gave there, or the arguments that we gave there, uh, didn't, well, couldn't at that stage, without further explanation, be applied to uh, fields of characteristic P. But now what we're going to do is do it for finite fields of characteristic P, not infinite fields of characteristic P, just finite fields of characteristic P. Okay, so uh, let's begin then. Uh, so what we want to do then is we want to characterize which polynomials, which I'll call P of X here, in the ring of polynomials over this finite field of characteristic P are actually going to be separable polynomials and which are not. Okay, so it's going to be just like the previous video uh, in this playlist where we uh, characterize the separable polynomials in a field of characteristic zero. We're going to split this video into two main parts. We're going to have theorem one and then theorem two, which will build on theorem one. And it's in theorem two that we will completely characterize which polynomials are going to be separable and which are not. But we're going to need theorem one to do that. Okay, so theorem one is actually, and indeed theorem two as well, is actually going to be the exact same statement as we had over fields of characteristic zero, but we're going to need a different justification for it here. Okay, so theorem one, let's begin with this then. Okay, so I'll just underline my title because it's very important in green here. Okay, so what does theorem 1 say? Theorem 1 says that if we have a polynomial P of X that is in the ring of polynomials over our finite field of characteristic P that is irreducible, okay, so I'll put if P of X is irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F here, so if P of X is irreducible in the ring of polynomials over our finite field of characteristic P here, then the claim is, then it is separable, okay? Then P of X is separable. And as I say, that's the exact same theorem that we had in rings of polynomials um, over a field of characteristic zero in the previous video, but we're going to need a different justification for it. And in fact, our justification is going to be, for the first part, exactly the same, but we're going to have to add something in to make this work, okay? Uh, so, if P of X is irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F, then P of X is separable. That is going to be theorem one, and we now need to prove that. But just before we do prove it, let me firstly start off by reminding you of what it means for P of X to be irreducible in the ring of polynomials over this finite field of characteristic P. Because 
you know, that's obviously central to this theorem, so we do need to have a good understanding of that. So I will just remind you of what it means for P of X to be irreducible. So firstly, remember that uh, this adjective of irreducible, it's only applied to polynomials that are not the zero polynomial. Firstly, you'd never apply it to the zero polynomial. And secondly, you don't apply it to units. Now, the units in a ring of polynomials over uh, a field are those polynomials uh, that are non-zero constant polynomials, okay? Because, of course, we know that, uh, effectively, the initial field sits inside the ring of polynomials over that field, and uh, the constant polynomials are the elements uh, of the initial field. And, of course, we know that all non-zero elements in the field are going to have a multiplicative inverse. So, indeed, they'll still have multiplicative inverses uh, when they're in this larger structure, which is the ring of polynomials over the field. Okay, so they will all be units. So, what we can conclude instantly is that P of X is non-constant. If it's irreducible, we can instantly say it's non-constant. Okay, so we know that it's degree greater than or equal to 1. The other thing that... Um, is part of the definition of irreducible, is that if you can find me a product of two polynomials in the ring of polynomials that makes P of X, so if I can write P of X is equal to A of X times B of X, so find some polynomials A of X and B of X, which are elements of the ring of polynomials over the field capital F, so these are in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F. If you can find a product like this, p of x is equal to a of x times b of x, then you instantly, if it is true that p of x is irreducible, then it's instantly true that one of these is going to be a unit, and one of them is then going to just be an associate of p of x. That's what it means to say that p of x is irreducible. It means that the only products that exist in the ring of polynomials over the field that actually make this polynomial p of x are trivial products, where one of the elements is a unit and one of them is just an associate of p of x. Okay, so let's say arbitrarily that a of x here will be the unit, and b of x the associate of p of x. Remember, an associate of p of x is just p of x times some unit, i.e. some constant polynomial. Okay, so only these trivial products exist that will make p of x. There are no non-trivial products where both of the um, polynomials that you're multiplying together are non-units that make uh, this polynomial p of x. Okay, so those, that, those are the two uh, criteria for p of x to be irreducible. Okay, and the claim is that if you have a polynomial in the ring of polynomials over this finite field of characteristic p, then you can instantly say that that polynomial is going to be separable. Okay, so now let's discuss the justification for this. So let's discuss uh, the proof of this. So proof. Okay, so the proof is going to start off exactly the same way as the proof uh, for this equivalent statement in rings of polynomials over a field of characteristic zero. However, as I say, we're going to have to add something in because something that we could say was true there is not going to be true here, uh, which was uh, crucial for the argument. Okay, right, so the proof of this. So, just like in the previous video, the way we're going to prove this is we're going to show that if this polynomial p of x is irreducible, then it is relatively prime to its derivative. And then, of course, we know from our video on separable polynomials that in an arbitrary ring of polynomials over an arbitrary field, if you can show that a polynomial and its derivative are relatively prime, uh, then you can instantly conclude that the polynomial p of x is separable. Okay, so that's going to be our tactic. So let me firstly just write out our polynomial p of x explicitly. So remember, it's a non-constant polynomial, so it's going to have degree greater than or equal to 1. So it might look like this. p0 plus p1x plus, let's say, all the way up to pnx to the n. Now, of course, it might stop at p1x if it's degree 1, but more generally, it's degree will equal n. So let's say that the degree of the polynomial p of x is equal to n here. So it's just useful to have p of x written out explicitly here so that we can have a better understanding of this proof. Okay, so now what we want to consider is the derivative of this polynomial. Now, this is where it's difficult because we're working in a field of characteristic equal to a prime p. Okay, if you're working in a field of characteristic zero, the derivative of p of x 
is extremely logical, it's extremely simple, it's extremely intuitive, whereas in a field of characteristic P it can be very, very strange. Okay, so, um, what you do, you still apply the same procedure as always, so you go to each one of the terms of the polynomial, you lower the power of x, and you multiply through by the old power, so the constant term goes completely, the degree 1 term becomes p1 here, okay, and then it goes on, so up here you'll have uh, n times pn x to the n minus 1. Okay, and you might be saying, well, what's so difficult about that? Well, the difficulty comes from the fact that some of these natural numbers here might actually be equal to zero. So remember, all of the natural numbers can be thought of as being in an arbitrary field, capital F. Okay, they just mean 1 plus 1, that natural number, many of times. Okay, the problem is that if we're working in a field of characteristic equal to a prime, then all the natural numbers that are multiples of that prime p are going to be equal to 0. Okay, and therefore, potentially, this one here could be equal to 0, and then you'd be multiplying by 0, so this term would vanish then. Okay, uh, so it becomes much more difficult to make conclusions about uh, the derivative. Um, in the when we were dealing with a field of characteristic zero, of course, we could instantly say n was not equal to zero because no matter how many times you add one to itself in a field of characteristic zero, you never get zero back again. So we knew this was not equal to zero. We were then multiplying two non-zero things together, so we knew that that would be non-zero. So we could instantly conclude that the degree of the polynomial here was n minus one. Okay, and because the degree of the polynomial originally was greater than or equal to one, that told us that this polynomial in particular, the piece of information we need, that this polynomial is not equal to zero. Okay, the derivative of the polynomial was not equal to zero. That's something we could conclude if we were working in a field of characteristic zero, because at the very worst case, we had a polynomial of degree one here, and then the derivative would just be uh, the coefficient from the degree one term. It would be p1. Okay, whereas in this case, when we're working in a field of characteristic zero, we cannot guarantee that so easily. Okay, we can't make that statement so easily. It is actually still true, okay, but we're going to have to produce another proof of it because this isn't enough at the moment. It was enough if we were working in a field of characteristic zero, but it is not enough now that we're working in a field of characteristic p. Okay, so what we need to be able to conclude is that the derivative of the polynomial is not equal to zero. Okay, and then we'll be able to uh, proceed with the argument. And firstly, let me just spell out where the argument's going and why this is so important. Of course, what we're trying to do is prove that these two polynomials are relatively prime. Okay, i.e. that the only common divisors of both of them uh, are um, units, basically. Okay, now... How do we want to proceed then? Well, we know that the polynomial p of x is irreducible, so that means that the only divisors of p of x full stop are units and an associate of this polynomial p of x, so associates of p of x. Okay, so if we've got any hope at all of finding a common divisor of both of these that is not a unit, it must be that that common divisor is an associate of p of x, because those are the only things full stop that are divisors of p of x. Okay, so then we have to turn to the derivative of p of x and ask, is there any hope or any chance at all that this derivative will be a multiple of this uh, associate of p of x, that it will be a multiple of p of x? And of course, provided that we know that the derivative of p of x is not equal to zero, the answer is going to be no, because the derivative is always going to have degrees strictly less than the degree of the original polynomial. That's something we can always say. That's something that even does hold true if we're working in a field of characteristic p, that the degree of the derivative of a polynomial is strictly less than the degree of that polynomial. Okay, provided, of course, that you're not just working uh, with the zero polynomial, because then, of course, the de derivative will be zero. But for any sensible polynomial, you can say that the degree of the... Um, derivative of the polynomial is strictly less than the degree of the original polynomial. Okay, um, so what that then implies is uh, that 
the derivative of the polynomial cannot possibly be a multiple of an associate of p of x, because associates of p of x are just p of x multiplied by a unit, i.e. they have degree n. And we know that because we're working in the ring of polynomials over a field, when you multiply two non-zero polynomials together, the degree of that product is always greater than or equal to um, the degree of each of the things that you're multiplying together. Indeed, it's going to be equal to the degree of each of the things that you're multiplying together added together. Okay, so the degree only gets bigger or stays the same. So, indeed, as provided you can conclude that the derivative of the polynomial p of x is not equal to zero, you can conclude that it cannot possibly be a multiple of an associate of p of x, because its degree is too small, basically. Okay? The problem is what if the derivative of the polynomial is equal to zero? That's where the problem comes, because if the derivative of the polynomial is equal to zero, zero is a multiple of anything. Zero is equal to an associate of p of x times zero, okay? Uh, and therefore, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to conclude that these two are relatively prime, okay? It would be false to say that they were relatively prime. So only if we can conclude that the derivative of the polynomial p of x is not equal to zero, then we can conclude that these two are indeed relatively prime. And once we've concluded that they're relatively prime, we know that relatively prime implies that p of x is separable, and therefore we will have proven this. Okay, so, of course, if we were working in a field of characteristic zero, we would have done by now, okay, because we've got the easy argument showing us that the derivative of p of x is not equal to zero, okay, but we are working in a field of characteristic p, and unfortunately, we need a much more complicated argument for why the derivative of this polynomial p of x cannot be equal to zero, and we will see that argument in the next video.